Let's look at the character of Estella in Great Expectations. Like Pip, she is an orphan and she's brought up by Miss Havisham. Now, Miss Havisham is abusive towards Estella. She treats her quite harshly, quite coldly. And also Miss Havisham, who was jilted at the altar, uses Estella and molds her to become a horrible manipulative person in order so that Stella could use her beauty to lure in men and break heart as Miss uh, and break the men's hearts as Miss Havisham's way of seeking revenge against the male species, okay? Because Miss Havisham has never gotten over the fact that she was jilted, which means rejected, at the altar on her wedding day. Now, Estella, even if she is quite cold, even as a child, she makes fun of Pip's background, she makes fun of his class and his social upbringing. We as readers actually develop a sense of sympathy for Estella because we realize that her cold, mean nature is as a result of how Miss Havisham treats her and how Miss Havisham basically hones her in to become a mean, manipulative person. Also, she enters into a very disastrous marriage with Bentley Drummle, which is quite abusive. However, once he does die and she becomes a widow, only then towards the end of the story is she free to associate with Pip whom she shows regretful feelings towards. Now, there's lots to bear in mind with Estella's character. Therefore, what I have decided to do, especially if you're writing about her either for your course or career exams, I have selected the most relevant quotations to bear in mind for her character as well as the word level analysis you want to do. Because remember, when you're writing anything and you're picking out quotations from Charles Dickens' book, you need to also use word level analysis, engage in word level analysis for each quotation. So let's begin with the first quote. Now this is a quote that actually describes Estella as a young girl, okay? So it's not her own words, but these are important descriptions relating to her as a character. And this of course establishes her as very scornful, particularly towards Pip. She, she is described as being a girl and beautiful and self-possessed. And she was as scornful of me as if she had been one in 20 and a queen. So this is Pip describing how when Estella meets him, she is very, very condescending towards him. She looks down on him, down on his class, even as a young girl, okay? Now here we can see this massive class difference between her and Pip. This is something that Pip obsesses over. He also does not feel worthy of her love and he professes to become a gentleman in order, in order to overcome this social boundary and feel worthy and maybe make Estella his wife. Now, the word level analysis you want to do here is firstly the rule of three to describe Estella as a girl, beautiful and self-possessed, but also the simile as if she'd been 20 and one and a queen. So of course, here we can see the massive divide and the massive difference between Pip and Estella. And of course, this is set up to show us how later she does break his heart. The second quotation for Estella's character is when Pip notes, her contempt for me was so strong that it became infectious and I caught it. So here we can see that Pip because Estella looks down on him as a young child, she looks down on him uh, in terms of his social background. Pip then internalizes this and looks down on himself, but also looks down on Joe Gargery and the people from his social background because he's internalized disliking being a working class individual. Now, the word level analysis, especially this is illustrating the big divide, especially even during this time, during the Victorian era between the poor and the rich. Now here, what, this, what you want to point out is firstly the use of the sibilance so strong to show just how contemptuous, how hateful Estella was of Pip, purely because he was a working class young boy and a young orphan. Also, you want to look at words that belong to the semantic field of sickness, infectious, as well as caught it. Okay, so these two words belong to the semantic field of illness. This is when Pip internalizes that he is not worthy of Estella because he comes from a lower working class background. The third quotation to bear in mind for Estella is when Pip realizes that girl has been brought up by Miss Havisham to wreak revenge on all the male sex. So here, of course, it's made evidently clear that Estella's, the, the, the aim that Miss Havisham has for Estella is to basically use her as a way to get back against men for what Miss Havisham felt was a slight against her being jilted at the altar. So of course, here we can see that Estella does fulfill her role very well. She breaks Pip's heart. However, of course, this also comes at the expense of her own happiness. The word level analysis you want to do for this quotation is the alliteration of be in being brought up by. And also 
the hyperbole that she is going to wreak revenge on all the male gender, okay? Now, remember also the uh, alliteration of B, B is what we call a plosive letter or a plosive sound, okay? So here, of course, we can see that Estella, Miss Havisham mistreats her, but this is a way to make her horrible, malicious towards men. The other quotation for Estella's character is when she herself states, I have no heart. Now, this is the declarative sentence. A declarative sentence is a sentence that states a fact, feeling, or mood. Now, here she is basically stating the fact that she has no heart. She's cold. Also, her cold nature is illustrated in the alliteration of H and have and heart. Of course, again, here we can see that Estella does foreshadow how she breaks Pip's heart. Okay, we can see that she's very cold and she is going to break his heart. The other quotation to bear in mind is when later on Miss Havisham wants to reverse all the terrible things that she's done to Estella, she wants her to become kind to also fall for Pip. Miss Havisham realizes she's made a huge and terrible mistake in, uh, in molding Estella to become this terrible individual. However, it's too late. Estella tells her, I am what you designed me to be. I am your blade. Now here we can see the contrast, the juxtaposition in the pronouns I versus you. And this is obviously contrasting Estella versus Miss Havisham. But also the fact that Stella says that I am your blade, blade referring to she's the person that Havisham, Miss Havisham can use to cut up men and cut up their hearts. Now this is a metaphor describing the terrible treatment that she's going to wreak on Pip simply because he's a man. The other quotation is later on towards the end of the story you want to realize that Estella has essentially been uh, experienced some kind of change as a result of her disastrous marriage. She had a very abusive marriage to Bentley Drummond so even if he was the same social class as her he still mistreated her really terribly. And she makes it clear to Pip that she herself has also undergone her own journey of change. She is now more melancholic, but also she's become a better person. She states, suffering has been stronger. So her suffering has been stronger than all other teaching and has taught me to understand what your heart used to be. So here we can see that she has developed a strong sense of empathy for what Pip went through what she put Pip through and she now feels really regretful and empathetic towards that because she herself now knows what it feels like to be mistreated because she was mistreated by her husband. The word love analysis you want to do here is sibilance in suffering and stronger. Also alliteration of T in teaching and taught. And finally the possessive pronoun your, okay, relating back to Pip's heart that Estella broke. Now, the final quotation to bear in mind for Estella's character is at the end of the story when they visit Miss Havisham's rundown home. And of course, and this is not when they visit, Pip goes to her rundown home, he finds uh, Estella and then realizes she's a widow, so she's now free to associate with Pip again. And it ends, this uh, chapter, chapter 59, ends in a very hopeful note. Pip states, I took her hand in mine and we went out of the ruined place, ellipsis. Now, of course, the ruined place is Miss Havisham's uh, home. It's now fallen in dis into disrepair, but also it symbolizes, so the place being ruined could also be symbolic of how both Pip and Estella life has really knocked them. It has ruined them. It has maybe destroyed them to some extent, but also rebuilt them uh, through the process of destruction, the naivety, the innocence has been destroyed. They've actually been rebuilt into better individuals. Okay. Now the word level analysis you want to do here, and of course the story ends on a positive note, is the alliteration of we in, uh, sorry, the alliteration of W in we and went. And of course, this really shows that both Pip and Esther, uh, Estella are both melancholic individuals now. They are far more knowledgeable of the ways of the world. However, they also do genuinely love each other. They've developed a soft, uh, Estella has especially developed a soft spot for Pip. Pip still loves her. And there is a sense of hope, okay? There's a sense of hope, even a sense of renewal in their love for each other. So that's it when it comes to the key quotations to remember and to bear in mind when discussing Estella's character and indeed other themes and novels within this story. Thanks so much for listening.